What do you remember about Buster when you were growing up? Mm, he was on the east side. And, um... Remember, Weesey was telling us she used to sew his clothes all the time. I think he only had like one or two pairs of clothes, him and his brother. She was always sewing them up for him. I remember he wanted to get his money, and she wouldn't take it. She didn't want to take it, and I remember him coming over and, and knocking Cousin Ralph out because he was drunk. And he broke the, he broke the uh, front window. The bus would come in and knock him out. I remember going to the paddock. Um, I remember going to the paddock when I was a little girl, and I remember going to, um, yeah, I guess it was the paddock, and I remember my mother sitting me, let's see, there was a bowling alley, and she sat me at the at the table in the bowling alley, and she went in the lounge at the paddock, at the cocktail lounge, and, and let me sit in the bowling alley. And I remember the the sailors and stuff come up to me and, Who, who's taking care of you, little girl? And I said, the waitresses. And they said, where's your mom? I said, she's in there. And they picked me up, and I showed them where she was sitting in the cocktail lounge. And that was Buster Workman's lounge. And I remember that he had a house in Collinsville with a big moat around it. And I remember that his mother, Grace, had 18 kids. And that was Aunt Louise's sister-in-law. It's a lot of kids. 18. But Buster and Ted were not from the same they weren't with the same father. And let's see, what else do I remember? Oh, I remember when they were in uh, in Juvie or something, they met Al Capone. And that's where they got interested in the, in the liquor deal. Yeah, I thought he was out there at prison in uh, San Francisco, but then when we went out there, we found out he wasn't. Well, he was he in was Leavenworth. Right yeah, that was just all uh, St. Louis false history. It was in Leavenworth that he had actually yeah. met Al Capone. Yeah, he'd never been to California. Yeah. I don't know where that come from. I have no idea, because everybody was like, oh, he was out there in uh, Alcatraz. Yeah. But then when I looked on the boat, or on the book there, he wasn't in there at all. I don't know whoever said that. I never heard yeah. of him. Yeah, because they said that he used to run the... Uh, even when I went to college in Quincy, they said that it, Capone's group and him would meet out there because they called that Little Chicago. So all the St. Louis hoods would go down there and meet all the Chicago hoods in Quincy, Illinois. Yeah. But they'd all get together there. Yeah, that was some. Um, and Buster ran. He ran um, from Peoria. He ran um, Chicago. He ran all down to St. Louis. Yeah. And then he had, um, his brother Ted had horses, had race horses. They got into, into the family. Yeah, he lived on that one ranch out there in Illinois. I don't remember that. Yeah, I was, I was reading something about it, but uh, it, when he had the horse race, uh, Ted, because oh, he had the race horses, and he had actually lived out there close to the stables there with, with all the horses. I don't remember that. But I remember, and I remember the bookies, bookmaking. I remember being a little girl and going over to Aunt Fanny, who was was Buster's uncle, uh, Aunt, Uncle Frank, and Aunt Fanny, who was Buster's aunt and uncle. And I remember going over there, and they had all the telephones, and they told me, don't play with the telephones. And they were making book. Right. And I remember that um, there was a boarding house. And then they would be upstairs. A couple girls would come down on their way out and they always hug my aunt, Aunt Louise. A couple ladies. 
I think, now that I think about it. Right. And there was this one funny looking guy and his name was Art DeLille. And he's the one that would bring in the, the bets and the bet money. And all which they would say to me was, don't touch the telephones, honey. And they'd give me pa paper and pencil to draw pictures on by my, because I would just sit there. Yeah, a little girl probably bored out of your mind. Yeah, but I was quiet. I never said nothing. And, um, yeah. I remember Grandpa Warner was telling me, that, that was my great-grandfather, so that be your uncle, and he was saying that, um, I guess it was his mom's funeral. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to come into St. Louis Buster, but they, the cops had made like a special thing and let him come to the funeral. Yeah, they let him come to the funeral. Yeah. Yeah, and, and my dad knew him. You know, my dad knew, knew him. Right. And uh, I remember they were talking, to, uh, making, like, teasing around, could I make a jock? I was a little girl, could I? Because <laughs> she could be a jock, Gus? She's small enough and light it up. I always called him Bus, not Buster. She called him Bus. And, um, yeah, she took care of him when he was a kid. Right. And then he went to juvie. And got mixed up with, uh, what do you call it? He's with the, I think the Shelton gang is what he started out with. Yeah, with the bootleg. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got bigger and bigger and and ran the whole east side. Peoria, all the way down to St. Louis. Which is crazy, because if you look at Las Vegas and all these places now, all that's legal now or state run. So, yeah. I mean, he didn't really do anything what I would consider well, illegal, illegal he nowadays. Didn't, he didn't pay taxes. Yeah. It's all about taxes. Yeah. And uh, the government wants their money. Well, yeah, it's, it, it, there's no taxes paid. And, uh, yeah. But, but I'd say 98, 99% of what he not, did was pretty uh, legal for now standards. Or prostitution. Right. Nothing to do with drugs. Yeah, mainly drugs. gaming or... It was just gambling. Yeah. Gambling and, um, and then the drinking during Prohibition, but... Right. Yeah. And I remember Stormy Harville. That was one of his lieutenants. Stormy Harville, I remember him when I was a little girl. And they all used to sit at a table and drink coffee at the at the paddock when I was a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. Stormy Harville. And he was he he looked just like the gangsters. You know, with the hat pulled down and the trench. Then stripes and all that. And that was the first, when I became master of our uh, Blue Lodge for there with the Freemasons. I went downtown and I got a fedora because I always wanted a fedora like Humphrey Bogart. And I finally got one. But Grandma was like, oh my God. <laughs> She's like, he was just an old drunk. I was like, he was a great actor. <laughs> there was a show, High Point. Did you ever go to the High Point? Mm -mm. Oh, you should have went. You know where it was at. It was down by like the Fox and all that? or? Mm -hmm. It was down by where I lived in Clayton. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never been down that way. I mean, I went down there to like visit you or a few places. Yeah. But... but anyway, when you go to the High Point, it's a real old theater. Okay. And when you come down from the bathroom stairs, there's a, a big plaque of Humphrey Bogart, Humphrey Bogart saying, watch your step, baby. <laughs> it's real neat. Yeah, we took Grandma and Alicia there to the Fox, and they had the... Um, Phantom of the Opera. I know. Yeah, that was pretty cool. They had the big chandelier drop and everything and, and right in front of that, us. You got her that uh, thing, music box. That little Christmas ornament in the box and everything? Yeah. You never got nothing so, out of the house. Mm-hmm. 